right, my previous video, I covered uh, kind of a first look at the Buddy RC Magnet Stretch 3-inch uh, FPV racing drum. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to wire up your receiver. I'm going to be wiring up an S-Plus receiver, but I'm also going to show you how to do it with a, um, a Spectrum receiver. And then we're going to go into Betaflight and we're going to configure the flight control board. And then I'm going to show you uh, some tests using uh, 2S, 3S, and 4S batteries, including strapping a GoPro to the top just to see how it handles it. I have doesn't come with a receiver on board so that's the first thing I'm gonna do is pop this top off and uh, get in here and throw a receiver on the board I'm going to be using probably just uh, an RXSR that I have here and then I'm gonna wedge that uh, it looks like there's plenty of room between the uh, flight controller and then the uh, plate they put in here for the VTX so I'm just gonna probably um, get it wired up heat shrink it and wedge it right into that spot looks like there's also plenty of room under the camera uh, or vertically here in the back all right, so I'm gonna get the receiver installed. Well, the first thing I did is I take out the four bolts uh, here on top and uh, get the top off, and then you're gonna pop your uh, TBS Unified Pro off, and you're gonna pull uh, this cable out. I actually added a new cable to mine, um, which is the pin next to the yellow pin, because I'm gonna add Smart Audio uh, so that I can control this board uh, through my Tyrannus radio. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is undo these four uh, screws here, which is gonna pop off this little uh, carbon fiber mid plate, and that's the one that your uh, Unify Pro is mounted to. We're gonna get that off, and then we're, so that's gonna give us access to the flight controller board. All right, so we've got that, that uh, mid plate off. The next thing we're gonna do is undo these four uh, standoffs, and that's gonna free up the flight controller. It looks like the entire flight controller sit, uh, uses uh, plugs, so that's gonna make it really easy. There's no wires hopefully gonna be soldered between the four and one and the flight controller that are gonna stop us from getting that top plate off so we can get to our solder points for our uh, S-Bus receiver. All right, with those uh, standoffs unscrewed, we can flip this board over, and then right down here is where it's going to give us access to, it looks like we have um, a solder bridge to change from 3.3 to 5 volts, and then also um, the PPM or S-Bus uh, in, that's where our receiver uh, signal wire is going to go. Okay, so here's what I've soldered to the board. If you were just looking to put a receiver on this and get it in the air, here's what you need to do. So here's my receiver here. And the, the wires that I run to the top of the board, um, are really all you need to do is, is solder up the ground. It's the second one over here um, from the end of the board. So if here's the USB port, opposite side, second one from the right, that's where you're going to put your ground. I have an extra cable here. This is my uninverted smart port. I'm going to be using that for telemetry. You don't need this. This is kind of a more advanced uh, feature here. Um, so if you want to play along and solder on your smart port as well, go for it. And it's going to go to TX3. Okay, so there's that. And then on the other side of the board, it should already be soldered to use uh, 5 volt instead of 3.3. Um, uh, so it's got the jumper here. And then you need to hook up your S bus to the S bus port right here. It says P slash S, and you're going to hook it up to there. If you were on Spectrum, you'd want to hook up the, uh, you'd want to have the, the, I believe the 3.3 would already be bridged and you can just uh, solder up to the 3.3 and then again you would use the either uh, there's a pad here for DSMX um, or SBUS all right and that's it that's pretty much all you need in order to get this in the air and then I've also added to my uh, TBS Unify Pro cable here I've added in the audio wire and I've run that to TX6 that's going to enable me to be able to do my uh, changing of my uh, my channels my band and the power output through my radio or OSD. Again, you don't need to do this. The only thing you really need to do is get your get your receiver soldered on and that's gonna be done on the bottom side of the board here and then ground here. All right, so I <clears throat> flipped over this plate here which had that uh, double set of tape on it and I mounted my RSXR receiver to that. So it's got basically, it's being stuck by this adhesive and it's flipped upside down and then I'm going to take my uh, Unify Pro VTX and I'm going to mount that right on top and it fits pretty nicely in here just like that and it sits flat uh, perfectly flat on that panel and I'm going to throw a piece of uh, additional piece of double sided tape on here in order to get the stick down um, but I just like the way that looks it's kind of nice and square in there everything looks good and tight I can still uh, if I pull this off I have access to, to bind my receiver if I need to 
but that's pretty much it. I'm putting it all back together now that I have all my soldering done. And then I'm, what I'm going to do for my antenna wires is I'm going to run them down and I'm going to put zip ties on the arms and extend these wires uh, forward like that. So I'll show you when it's all done when I got the top on. At this point I've already bound my radio to the receiver. Uh, that's going to be something you need to do specific to your radio and your uh, receiver. Um, so have that done before you get started on the Betaflight configuration. Alright, so we're going to open up the Betaflight configurator. We're going to choose the right USB from the drop down and then we're going to connect. We're going to go to the ports tab first. One thing I noticed right off the bat is there were two Serial RX uh, radio buttons checked for this. And I went ahead and unchecked the one on UR3. I knew where we had the receiver hooked up, which was definitely UR1. We don't need this on UR2, so I'm going to uncheck that. Now I know I hooked up my smart port telemetry to UR3, so I'm going to enable that here with the drop down menu. And then on UR6, which is uh, TX6, where we hooked up the uh, TBS uh, smart audio, we're going to be enabling uh, TBS smart audio from the drop down. On the configuration tab, we're going to scroll down to where it says uh, receiver, and we're going to choose serial base receiver and S bus on the two drop downs. Then we're going to jump over to the receiver tab. You may notice right off the bat, uh, if you have your radio on and it is bound to the receiver, that you'll notice in the preview that your drone is spinning out of control. That's because it's got the wrong channel map selected. You need to go up to the channel map and select TAER and hit save. At that point, your quad should be responding as you'd expect to uh, inputs on your radio. Once I know that my receiver is receiving inputs correctly on the flight controller, I'm going to jump to the modes tab and I'm going to set up an arm switch. That's going to enable me to arm the quad via a uh, two position switch on my radio. Um, I think that's really important. And then I'm also going to just do some of the other things that I like to set up for modes. Um, I'm going to set up turtle mode, which is flip over after crash to one of my switches. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on a beeper, which is going to use the, uh, the ESCs and motors uh, as a beeper in case I crash this and lose it in the weeds somewhere. All right, that's all we're going to do for modes. We're going to go ahead and save that. All right, at this point, your drone should be absolutely ready to fly. Uh, you've got your receiver hooked up, installed, and configured through the Betaflight configurator. Um, so you should be good to go. You, know, you should be able to strap on a battery and take off and be flying just fine. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some of the more um, advanced features, uh, some of the things that I like to do to, to the quads that I fly uh, to get that like top performance, and just give you an idea of how I usually configure things. All right, so we're going to connect. In the configuration tab, I bumped this up to DSHOT 1200. Uh, these are some really high-end components, and they should have no problem running this, uh, this higher protocol. Um, I also reversed my motors uh, to props out. If you do this, you need to go into BL Heli 32 and reverse your motor direction as well. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I don't recommend checking this box here. Just go ahead and skip that. I bumped the system configuration uh, gyro and PID loop frequencies up to 8K 8K and turned off the barometer. I punched in my own uh, craft name, and this is my flight handle, and that shows up on the OSD. And then down here, I've turned on telemetry, and I'm using that for the Terrana Smart Port telemetry, um, as well as air mode on, anti-gravity, and dynamic filter. Under the PID tuning tab, uh, you can jump over to filter settings. I've switched this to uh, PT1, and I've turned off all the filtering. Uh, I did test this on 2S, 3S, and 4S. On 4S, you do get warm motors. Um, during the winter months, when it's cold out like this, um, you can fly just fine and not worry about smoking anything. Um, but if you are wanting to run a more conservative tune uh, where you're not risking uh, damaging your motors, uh, I would suggest uh, leaving this turned on and possibly even one or two of these. Um, you really need to do test hovers and determine what's best for your setup. As this quad gets older and your motors start to get uh, beat up a little bit, it's going to introduce new vibrations into the system, in which case you may need to have more filtering going on. Uh, but for me right now, uh, I'm starting out just like this. I've run about 12 packs through the quad with these settings, and I'm very happy with how it performs, and the motors are coming down uh, warm but not hot. For the OSD screen, uh, I've turned on the main battery voltage, and i turn that off, and... Uh, the average cell voltage, uh, and I put those in the corner. I've got my uh, I've got my craft name in the bottom left here, and then I like to leave on timer two in the top corner. It just shows me uh, you can see timer two total arm time. I like to know uh, since I've plugged in the battery how long have I been in the arm state. It usually gives you a good idea of how long you've been flying. Under the CLI, 
Um, I have crash recovery turned on, so if I type git crash, you're going to see crash recovery on. If you want to set this yourself, go ahead and do set crash recovery equals on. And the other thing I have is a small angle. So if you do git small, you'll see a command called small angle, and I've set and I've set my small angle equal to 180. Um, this is potentially unsafe. This allows the drone to be armed at any angle. Um, and this is important for if you crash on the track or you crash in the field and your drone sideways and you want to be able to take off. It's really annoying if it's uh, if the quad won't arm because it's sitting at an angle. So you know, turn this to 180 at your own risk, uh, understanding that your quad will arm if you're holding it in your hand uh, sideways and you flip the arm switch. Um, once you're done setting those changes, go ahead and type save and your flight control will restart. Again, those are some of the things that I like to do on my flight controllers. They are not required to make this drone fly great. It's going to fly great out of the box. Um, these are just more, um, more advanced, more aggressive uh, tuning features uh, that I personally like to use. All right, so now that we have the ports tab all hooked up and we've got the soldering all done, I want to make sure that uh, I'm getting a video for one and that the OSD is working. And then I also want to check that I'm able to change the channel uh, bands and power of my VTX. So I'm going to go ahead. This looks good. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the battery. All right. And I see the Unified Pro is powering on. I want to see if this is unlocked as well. And it is definitely not unlocked because uh, when you hold the button down for three seconds, it'll go through your channel. You hold it down for three seconds, it'll go through your band. And if you hold it down for three more seconds, if it is unlocked, it'll actually go to a third set of be uh, flashes and it'll tell you the output power. Um, because it didn't go into that, I, I can assume that this is not unlocked. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. How we're going to do it is we're going to hold it for three seconds until it flashes and it, we get one flash, three more seconds, flashes, two flashes, and now we're going to hold it for 30 seconds until it uh, flashes again. So you can see it's powered on right now. We're just going to keep, keep on holding it down until we get that uh, the next set of flashes. What this is going to do is going to unlock the VTX and allow us to get in and uh, choose other channels and also set the output power. Um, so there we go. It just fl turned off. Okay. So now we get three flashes and output power. So it's at 25. One more click. One, two, three. We should get two blue flashes. That's uh, This is the, the race edition, right? So it's got, yep, so it's got only 25 and 200 milliwatt output, which is perfectly fine. And now I'm going to hold it down and lock it in place. All right. So with that done, I'm going to turn on my radio. I can see Welcome that to open TX. my receiver is looking for a signal. All right, and there we go. All right, so we're back here on the bench. I've got my uh, monitor here so I can see what's going on. got my radio. I'm going to see right now if uh, if the uh, the smart audio is working. So we're going to go, um, I'm going to go up to the left to get into the Betaflight OSD. Go down to features. We're going to go to smart audio. All right, so it looks like we're on A1 right now. I'm going to go to A2 and save. And I expect that when I hit confirm here that we lose video. And that tells us that the smart audio is definitely connected correctly. And we're, we're actually changing the, the, the channel and band on the VTX through our radio. Oh, there we go. All right, so we've lost our uh, video. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go to channel uh, A2. Let me go to that. Sorry. There we go. A2. And we've got video again. That tells us that we have smart audio correctly connected to the Unify Pro. Okay, at this point I'm feeling pretty good about everything. Uh, it's all configured and working. Uh, so now I'm going to basically uh, put it all back together and get it ready to fly. So here it is with the zip ties in place. Um, you can see how I've got the zip ties on the back arms with the zip tie aiming forward. And then I've run the receiver wires down along the zip ties and then heat shrink on it uh, in order to hold those in place. I've also added a zip tie to the, uh, the antenna in the back, the video antenna. Um, just holding it to the uh, the vertical standoff. That way it keeps it out of the way of the props and uh, it's vertical so I know I'm going to be getting good video. Alright, at this point your quad should be fully set up and you should be ready to fly like a champ. If you have any questions about what I did in this video, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back with you. I know I said I'd be getting into battery testing and flight videos, but we're already over 15 minutes, so I'm going to leave that for the next video. If this video helped you, please drop me a thumbs up. And if you enjoy videos like this, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.